Sea tomatoes are a type of bacteria called cyanobacteria. They are prokaryotes, so they are different from algae you would see in the water. They form spheres that are filled with tiny little filaments of individual cells. When these cells get together, they form what we would call a colony. So each sea tomato is a colony of cyanobacteria. Okay, so I'm just going to cut right through the center. And when we pull it apart, you can see different layers within here. So you can see a sort of hardened center, and then a dark orange layer, followed by a very much lighter layer on the outside. And most of this is um, different layers of protein that form a mucilaginous sheath, a protective gel. So the outside is actually quite hard and it's this property that allows them to tolerate freezing and thawing in these arctic lakes. And that's a really unique feature um, that we don't see in some other types of organisms. Um, so they're also really unique because they can photosynthesize. So they use light um, to produce energy. Sea tomatoes fix atmospheric nitrogen, meaning they produce available nitrogen for other organisms living in the lake. This is why smaller organisms can be found living on the outside of the sea tomato. However, sea tomatoes also cover a large portion of the lake bottom, which may suppress plant growth. This is probably why there are not many macrophytes living in sea tomato lake. Um, well, studying cyanobacteria is actually very um, helpful in the field of science because cyanobacteria occur everywhere. So the things that we learn from, say, a sea tomato actually apply to bacteria all over the world, bacteria that live in the soil and in the snow. Yeah. And the metabolic processes that happen in um, these special cells uh, could potentially have other applications in medicine and um, and understanding these hmm. other forms of life. So because they're so complex and we still understand so little about them, it's really important to try to um, unravel those mysteries.